Hello, Raw Mithril here once again, getting back to Mac Mammal 2, and it's time for the judge commentary on the, well, one new stage we just played today. 15th place, M. Shakaline, Sector Upsilon 6. Snow and Pyro. Very interesting and creative level, but some design issues prevent me from liking it as much as I'd like to. The first three Noble Nickels are the biggest defenders, really. The Vini Vidi Vici one isn't terrible, but I feel like some of the spike maneuvers are a tiny bit too tight. The Chill Block route is fine to actually get onto, but I'm not a fan of the Big Eye Room because if you get bad RNG, then it can force you to either use a utility or die. I really don't like the Auto Scroll route, though. The first part has some really precise spike dodging, and it just is not fun. Second part with the Dust Blocks, it's sometimes really unclear on what you have to do, and I died a lot trying to figure it out. Also, it feels like whenever you get a trinket or nickel, a lot of the time there's no way out other than dying, especially trinkets since they don't save on level completion. There's not many one-way screen transitions, so it's hard to return to the main hub with your trinkets without dying. However, past the complaints there, this level is fantastic. Thank you for providing a map. It was a bit hard to understand at first because of the lack of a UR here marker, but once I figured it out, it was extremely helpful and eliminated loads of guesswork. The reverse gravity is used very, very well here, and I love the interactions with account bombs. The Oku block sections are really cool and varied too, and as an exploration level, it's pulled off incredibly well because no one path takes very long to play, but the actual playtime comes from trying to 100% it. The VVVVVV references are really funny and clever, and the bonus VVVVVV area is really fun, and I adore the little touches with the room name. The boss fight with Captain Viridian is really fun, and the fights with engine default bosses aren't too shabby either. I love how you pulled off the Mecha Dragon fight. Overall, this level is really, really good and incredibly well built, but there's just a few flaws that bring it down and prevent it from being truly amazing. Jupy Hornet. Wow, this level is absolutely huge. There are three energy elements and several different paths to go with collectibles along the way. However, I think this level is a bit too excessive, and it can be annoying having to backtrack all over the place to find everything. It takes an hour or two to explore the entire place and get every single item. It felt kind of like a smaller version of Super Smash Bros. Brawl's Great Maze. However, I took as many routes as I could find. The Oku Block puzzles were nice, but one of them requires the player to make some really wide jumps. The difficulty isn't very consistent. Those auto-scrolling sections on the top route were insanely hard. My biggest issue with this stage was the amount of teleporters. I wouldn't mind those by themselves, but this stage is so big that it takes about 10 seconds to load, so it can be annoying having to wait for that several times in a row. Overall, though, I think this was a good level. It just felt like a bit too much at parts, that's all. Angel. Submitting a level like this to a contest is a really risky move, if you ask me, since what this is more closely resembles a full game than it does a standard level. I think it's a level that needs time and dedication put into a playthrough in order to be truly appreciated. This level is massive, as evident by the map and endless collectibles that can be found if you're up for an extra challenge. The map was a really helpful inclusion in the level, and while I think it's silly that you need to take a screenshot of it, it makes traversing the sector much less painful to traverse. As far as difficulty is concerned, this level does a good job at introducing several gimmicks in their own secluded areas and ramping up their difficulty as you go along. In a sense, the level can be described as a variety of interwoven levels. I really enjoyed this level as a whole, and the secret exit for getting all the trinkets is easily my favorite section, being a huge VVVVVV nerd myself. That said, this level does have its issues. For example, many sections in the level are unfortunately completely trivialized by the player's utility items. <laughs> I'd count that as a good thing, honestly. Another point of criticism is that I found the auto-scroll sections to be rather precise at times, and the noble nickel in the section can easily lead to an unfair death. I collected it while upside down, and found myself stuck in that little box. <laughs> you and me both. In addition to this, accessing and proceeding in that area can quickly use up the player's weapon energy for various utility items. I also wish it would save trinkets across playthroughs, not just death. So, yeah, overall I gotta stress that this level slash game really needs a few hours of dedication in order to be truly appreciated. Gariri. I gotta say, I'm more than impressed. I don't think there's a single level in this game that is more creative than this one. I really liked how well the stage layout was used with the different creative gimmicks. I also had a lot of fun exploring this stage and finding new secret paths. I also appreciate the inclusion of a map, but it's honestly not done that well. However, I unfortunately can't call this a perfect level. The level design isn't top-notch, with many sections requiring trial and error, extremely precise movement, or a combination of the two. Additionally, I think there's one noble nickel that you can't get without dying. Also, I'm slightly upset over the fact that if you wish to collect all trinkets, there are various points of no return scattered across the stage, meaning you'll have to restart the whole level to get them. Finally, 
That, finally, there's a lot of sections that can easily be broken through using special weapons. But seriously, even though this stage has so many problems, the concept behind it is absolutely fantastic, and I really appreciate the effort put into it. Would it not have the problems I mentioned, this would easily be a perfect stage in my eyes. And a spark. I have a fair bit to say about this level. Interesting concept, it's basically a mini-exploration title in a single level. The use of gravity flippers in a novel way is great, and individually most areas of this level are by themselves good, if sometimes great. Heck, the stage is so convoluted it comes with a map, which unfortunately is not a mini-map a la Metroid, but for a single level that would be hard to program. The stage is also incredibly frustrating, does not take the fact it relies on instant death into account with its checkpoints, defies basic player logic at times, and asks for far too many finicky movements in succession that any fun with the level, concept, and music is killed stone dead. I had to quit this stage and do something else four times. Four. Every time I reached some sort of stopping point, I'd take it. This is one of the few stages where I did not want to keep playing, but felt like I had to to get a full experience. First major drawback, the lack of background. The entire stage is almost entirely black, and this is a major detriment to the player's enjoyment and actively hinders the stage a lot. There is no way whatsoever to tell what is and isn't a pit in this level. It'd be nice to know that in advance before the player throws themselves down into the abyss. The map provided color code sections. These sections are the same basic tile set the rest of the stage uses, so the player can be left rather confused as to what sector they're in. More background details were definitely needed, if only to help lessen some of the confusion. The second major problem with this level, the instant death. It's not handled well, especially given how exacting the requirements are every so often. What kills your stage dead in my eyes is the Mecha Dragon route. The spike drop is harsh, the auto-scrolling segment is worse, the final few maneuvers, all of which must be done on a strict time limit thanks to the scroller, are extremely tight and use a mechanic that is not entirely natural to a player's timing. Not only is there no checkpoint between the spike drop and the auto-scroller, there is no break at all in this section at all. Sometimes, it is not a matter of how long a segment is, but how difficult the challenge in question is. Any of these segments, although hard, would have been fine by themselves. Combined, they ruin this sector. To give credit where it's due, the second auto-scrolling segment is rather fun, very well designed, and actually has a checkpoint. The Gravity Man route is a, to uh, is a tad weird. The Oku block area, surprisingly, is fine. The Count Bomb route has a jump in the stage, which, up until this point, has not required weapons, seemingly requiring a weapon to bypass. Or if it doesn't, that jump must be pixel perfect or something, because Mega Man saw the bottom of that pit many, many times. Either way, it comes out of nowhere. Yeah, I know the jump you're talking about, and I'm really not sure if you can do that without utilities. Finally, there are the collectibles, the nickels, and the new trinkets. Here is the final nail in this stage's coffin. Hitting these sometimes requires the player to die after collecting them. This is really counterintuitive and goes against any instinct the player would have. The end game after the trinkets is rather good, but by this point the player has played the stage for an awful long time and probably wants to leave, so it comes off as irritating. The fact that trinkets are not saved between attempts at the level doesn't help. The new boss, it exists. Yep. The alternative attack pattern it uses exactly once is rather fun, if lasting for a bit too long, and spends the rest of the battle doing absolutely nothing threatening whatsoever. If he had mixed these up a bit, this level would have been entertaining. Overall, great concept for a level, but man, this level annoyed the life out of me. Okay, so before I solidly get to my thoughts on the level, there is a detail here that I feel like I should bring up. This was something that I was told by friends after I finished playing the level. Apparently, the designer of this stage is quoted as saying that they wanted to have forced death as a concept in this stage just to have it there. And that's a gutsy decision. Forced death is something that has to be handled very, very carefully. You need there to be a reason to have it. Ironically, the real VVVVVV, I feel like it has a good example of this. There's one shiny trinket that actually has a forced death part in it. Basically, you have a room that has a checkpoint, there's a shiny trinket on the other side of some barriers, but you can't clear those barriers from your side. So you have to go through a bunch of rooms, which are littered with checkpoints, and you have to avoid every single one. You have to loop all the way over to the other side of that room, clear the barriers, take a forced death so that you respawn at the original checkpoint in that room, since it doesn't act like you left that room, anything that you did there remains done, and you can get the trinket. So, there's actually a reason for the forced death. It's part of a puzzle, it's a means to an end. Here though, the forced death... It just felt like it was kinda there for no real reason. 
so all it really did was just kind of add tedium and artificially extend the gameplay, making you have to redo areas a lot. So, yeah. I just kind of wanted to get it, get that thought out of the way first, because that was something that I kind of felt the need to talk about, because it is an interesting idea. Can force death be used well? And I think it can, I just think it kind of missed the mark here. Overall, I still have a positive view of this stage. It was actually pretty nicely designed. Most of the areas I had problems with, though, were the ones listed by the judges. The auto-scroll sections were quite a thing. The sheer precision needed in the first part, which I'm honestly not sure how you're supposed to do that part, what timing is required to get through it without using the super arrow like I did, and the second part with the block puzzles, I would have enjoyed that segment a lot more if it wasn't for the auto-scrolling, and I'm honestly not sure if there is a way to get that nickel without dying, if there's a way to get in there while you're flipped right side up rather than upside down. The rest of the stage, honestly, I enjoyed it. I, again, think I would have liked it more if the shiny trinkets did save between playthroughs instead of having to purposefully die on one end to go to the other one. Apparently there is a way to break it, I've been told, but I'm not really sure what that entails, to where you can actually do the full stage without forced death, so I have no idea what that entails. I, I haven't seen anything like that, but apparently it's something people can do. But for the average player, forced death is going to be a thing here, and I just don't really feel like it adds a lot to the stage. Most of the concepts, though, here are really nice, but it does feel like about somewhere between three to five stages rolled into one, so it is a bit excessive. It's like I said, it's an ambitious stage, I can give it that, and it is really cool. Technically, it's not a bad stage, but... It definitely had its issues. It was an experience, and I'm glad I played it, and it did a lot of things really well. I have to say that. To end on a positive note, this stage did a lot of things really well. It did use the reverse gravity really well for some puzzles, and overall, I had a good time with it. But yeah, that's where we're going to call it for now, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well.